that education receives the highest share, uh, followed by health and uh, defense and, and uh, um, safety and security. It's uh, correct, uh, however, the uh, uh, allocation to education drops slightly over the uh, medium term expenditure framework by a total of, of one. Uh, percentage points uh, that is combined uh, basic and, and higher education. Um, health, uh, the, the share for health uh, remains almost uh, uh, the same at, at uh, slightly more than, than 10 percent. Uh, as in the past, and I think it has uh, been raised by various uh, uh, commentators, defense. Uh, benefits from higher allocations than uh, safety and security. Um, for me it's also a, a, a concern uh, because I think we are more concerned about the internal or the state of internal security than, than of external uh, security. So I think uh, the, we, we need to get the priorities right there. Uh, um, Maybe we should even uh, consider over time to transforming the uh, defense force into an effective border guard. But there are a few votes, and um, it has been mentioned here, that um, receive more funds uh, than envisaged in the current uh, um, MTF and then other votes uh, where that have to suffer some, some cuts. Um, in particular, the office of the Prime Minister received more than uh, previously anticipated. That has something to do, certainly, with uh, allocations to the emergency uh, disaster fund because of the drought uh, we are experiencing in, in, in the country. So that is uh, probably justifiable. But there are also uh, higher allocations to the office of the president and some other votes um, where I'm not sure uh, what the justifications are. While on the other hand, uh, and a bit surprising, uh, the uh, ministry that uh, has to deal or has to deal with uh, the steepest uh, cuts are uh, the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and uh, SME Development and uh, also the Ministry of uh, Agriculture um, receives less than it was uh, for, for the new financial year 2019-20 uh, than it was uh, anticipated uh, when the current budget uh, was stable and that despite the uh, and I would say uh, correct uh, priorities on these sectors. Uh, agriculture could be a very important role in, in stimulating economic growth. I think there is huge potential that we haven't really tapped into so far. And uh, also, MITSMET is responsible for the implementation of the growth at home strategy, and there uh, are um, about six uh, um, sector strategies currently being implemented, they certainly need financial resources um, as well. So therefore, um, yeah, I was a little bit surprised when I punched in the data to realize um, that they actually do not get more rather less. Oh, it's working. Thank you very much. By the way, we, we were colleagues uh, uh, almost 15 years ago, I think, or so at Metro. And we still work closely together. So, okay, uh, just to illustrate again what, what I tried to summarize, uh, uh, these are the uh, um, votes uh, that benefit from additional resources compared to uh, what uh, was uh, allocated in, in the um, MTF for, for the current uh, uh, financial year, uh, among others, uh, 
National Planning Commission received 50% more uh, Prime Minister 25, uh, Office of the President 30, and even National Assembly slightly more. And as I mentioned, uh, um, some, some of the uh, votes um, have to do more with less, maybe there are some efficiency gains. Also, urban and, and rural development, uh, they are responsible for sanitation, for, for housing, and so on. One of the critical issues really in the country. Um, I believe if we get this right, we can stimulate economic growth, we can uh, stimulate activities in the manufacturing sector uh, uh, substantially. Uh, the Electoral uh, Commission was mentioned. Uh, the uh, allocation is uh, increased to 200, uh, 288 million this year because of the elections. Um, but surprisingly, it, it stays at that uh, level for the next uh, three years. So I don't know what other elections are coming up in, in 2020. <laughs> I'm not yet informed uh, about it. But uh, I expected a clear uh, a reduction back to, to normal levels. So maybe there are some uh, there's some potential for savings. Um, then on, on the allocation by item, and, and this is really, uh, I think, the, the, the crucial issue. Um, we see a slight increase. So it indicates that it's very challenging to get uh, the wage bill, let's say, under control. And uh, I was always a bit skeptical about this approach of natural attrition that we rely on, on, on uh, employees to resign, retire, uh, and so on from public service, which is quite difficult in, in a time of, of uh, economic slowdown because the private sector doesn't really offer renovations in, except for some uh, uh, very qualified uh, experienced personnel, but otherwise uh, um, there's hardly any way you can move out of the public sector. So I think what is necessary is that we have a more structured uh, approach to, um, to, to yeah, even review the whole setup of the uh, public sector and, and uh, embark on a public sector reform not only on, on offices, ministries and agencies, also public enterprises, the wage bills there are also certainly uh, uh, quite high, and all the other public entities that exist, uh, it's often forgotten. We have about, I think, uh, 600, 610 or so public entities uh, in, in Namibia and Georgia. Uh, likewise, uh, the smallest uh, bar, the, the, the yellow one uh, referring to SOEs, we have seen a reduction in allocations to SOEs from 2.3% of the total budget uh, to 1.7%, but then again it remains there. So it's anticipated that uh, there are no further uh, cuts in transfers uh, for the remaining of the um, the uh, MTEF period. Social grants account for about 6, 6.4, uh, 6.3% 6 uh, of total expenditure. I believe this is money well spent. Uh, we, we need to address income inequality and, and poverty in the country. Um, not only that people can live in, in dignity, but it makes economic sense. Because if you strengthen the income of, of uh, low income earners, this money flows almost immediately back into the economy and often uh, uh, if they are purchasing uh, domestically produced products and not imported products. So the, the impact on the economy is much stronger than it would 
be a fuel increase, uh, let's say, in terms of uh, uh, the metals. However, um, it was mentioned that uh, the, uh, um, the, the social ground for people with disabilities and uh, for the old uh, uh, or for pensioners was increased by uh, 50 million uh, dollars per month. Um, in the year 2000, the uh, amount for the child grant and for the uh, uh, old age uh, disability grant was the same at uh, 200 uh, Namibian dollars. If you adjust that over time by the inflation rate and the uh, uh, allocation to the uh, uh, child grant was increased only once, I think it was in 2000, yeah, 2014 by 50. It's currently at two hundred fifty dollars, so it's a twenty percent off of the pension uh, fund. It, it has a value of uh, ninety uh, ninety five dollar currently compared to the value uh, of the um, old age uh, ground of eight hundred sixty dollar in, in two thousand uh, prices. So um, certainly the, the, the purchasing value of the child grant has declined substantially. On the other hand, I think we, we have to acknowledge that the beneficiaries of the child grants that are for invalid um, has increased from, I think, in 2000, there were about 4,000 children benefiting. Uh, it's now at least 200,000. Uh, or, or, no, or more. So, but we need to strike a balance between increasing the coverage and also making sure that this uh, ground really has an impact uh, on, on the beneficiaries. Same as uh, one, one of the favorites always, um, government spends uh, uh, about uh, 2.5 2 uh, billion on CMAS. The uh, public uh, servants uh, contribute uh, about 300, 400,000 uh, to, to the total cost. So it's a contribution of 16% that even declines to 13% uh, based on the figures in the in the budget documents. However, the minister yesterday announced that they are going to double the contributions for public servants uh, to CMAS, uh, even then it, it would cover probably more, uh, not more than, than a quarter of the total costs. Um, there's also one, one, one aspect of these contributions I think we, we need to review. It's a flat rate, a respective, uh, sorry, uh, but um, the, whether you are deputy uh, executive director or a cleaner, you pay the same amount per uh, month. Uh, we, we always stress the importance that we need to reduce income inequality and so If you would switch to a percentage contribution, everyone contributes, let's say, 5% of, of the gross salary. Um, it would be much, uh, much more uh, or much fairer, let's, let's say, uh, than um, uh, having a flat rate um, uh, uh, contribution. And especially if you now couple the, the, the flat rate, it hits the poor or the low income order. In particular, because there are hardly any inflationary adjustments to the salaries. Um, so therefore, we, we, we need to find a way to maybe in, in the not too distant future switch to a percentage uh, contribution and recover more. It should be possible to, let's say, recover at least a billion more uh, from, from uh, public service. Because the subsidy amounts to almost uh, 20,000 uh, public employees. Briefly on, on, on revenues, um, uh, some of the um, revenue sources 
have seen a substantial increase uh, compared uh, to previous figures, in particular other mining uh, companies. But as expected, uh, taxes on income for individuals are downward adjusted by 8%. And uh, VAT almost close to, to 10%. Fortunately, uh, SACU helps us out uh, this time, uh, and uh, the transfers for this year has increased by, by 16%. This is not just small change. What is also encouraging, I just uh, compared uh, GDP growth to the growth in, in income tax and VAT over time, 10 years period uh, between uh, 2008 and, and 2017. So uh, revenue from income tax and from VAT increased much faster than GDP growth, which indicates that there are uh, significant efficiency gains. And um, more residents abide by the uh, by by the tax laws, despite these ongoing uh, court cases. I think it also sends a strong signal um, you can not uh, uh, escape the arm of, of justice. It was mentioned yesterday that uh, the tax-free uh, um, allowance for, for pension fund contributions will be increased to a maximum of 150,000 um, Namibia dollar per annum. This is again one, one of the areas I think we, we and there are many more also in, in um, our tax system. Um, that is not in line with reduced, uh, reducing income inequality. <laughs> because tax free allowance benefits those uh, who have a higher marginal uh, tax rate. The highest marginal, uh, marginal tax rate is currently 37%. So if you have the highest income bracket, currently you benefit to the tune of 14,800. From, uh, from this tax-free allowance to a pension fund. If we increase it to 150,000, it would be 55,000. That's probably the average uh, salary of a Namibian uh, employee. Uh, while those um, that earn uh, less than 50,000 uh, per annum, uh, they don't benefit at all from tax-free allowances because uh, 50,000 is a tax threshold, you don't pay any taxes. Um, so therefore these tax-free al allowances are, I would say, counterproductive to our uh, attempts to reduce uh, income inequality. We should switch to tax credits. That so everyone receives a certain tax credit that is uh, automatically deducted from, from the tax you have to pay. Uh, and this amount is the same for all taxpayers. That will contribute again uh, to, to uh, a reduction in income inequality. And I think someone who earns more than 1.5 uh, million uh, per annum, uh, that is the highest uh, income bracket and the highest marginal tax rate. They don't really depend on all these tax credits for of, of fifty five um, thousand Namibia dollar. So I think there is some. This is, these are areas we, we really need to to look into. And if we would have tax credits uh, that benefit again low income earners, it benefits the local and the domestic economy because these are not funds then that end up on, on offshore accounts and saving accounts, but they are immediately spent uh, in the economy. Quickly on our ambitions concerning uh, the budget deficit and uh, public debts, um, we have managed uh, to stay above our um, 
budget deficit uh, target of, of several percent. Uh, but we are quite above uh, our public uh, debt to GDP ratio, aiming at 35 percent. It's uh, going up beyond uh, 50 percent. In, in order to, to stabilize uh, public debt, um, my quick uh, uh, calculation is we need to have a um, budget deficit of 2.5 percent or below. That is just to stabilize, even at 50 percent, if you want to reduce uh, public debt to GDP ratio, most likely. Uh, the the uh, budget deficit needs to be below two months, uh, five percent, unless we can stimulate economic growth to above six seven percent, which I think is a bit optimistic over the next few years. Um, most of our debt is in uh, uh, in, in uh, domestic uh, is domestic debt. Uh, foreign debt accounts for slightly more than a third. It made sense uh, um, in, in the beginning to um, borrow on the international markets because interest rate levels were much lower. So in 2009 10, uh, foreign debt accounted for 25% uh, of, of total debt, but for only 11% of interest payments which clearly indicates uh, much lower uh, interest rate levels in foreign markets. But this has been eroded by the currency depreciation. So currently, although uh, uh, interest rates in Europe are negative, you have to pay if you uh, uh, deposit your uh, money on, on banks if it's more than a million euro. Um, so, uh, because of the depreciation of the uh, um, 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 dollar, it turned around. And uh, now interest payments are equal to, to the debt, uh, debt stock. Um, just in, in, in conclusion, um, I think it, it's uh, welcome uh, that. Uh, the uh, capital budget has been increased and funds from operational budgets to capital uh, um, capital budget uh, transferred. But what is important is speedy implementation. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if we had gone out of recession last year, if we had spent the capital budget speedily as uh, it was uh, allocated. But uh, in the midterm uh, budget review, the um, Minister of Finance announced that one billion had to be relocated to um, to operational budget. If that had been uh, spent on, on, on the capital uh, budget, it would have improved uh, our economy uh, substantially. Uh, I think we also need to uh, ensure the efficient op uh, operation of the Central Procurement Board, um, so that we speak up implementation. Um, compared to the previous years, the current uh, uh, budget deficit and, and, and uh, debt forecasts are probably more realistic, although I have my doubts that we will be able to, to reduce budget deficit uh, to 2.8% uh, by the end of the current. Um, um, test. I mentioned public uh, wage bill. Uh, we need to have a different approach and review the whole structure. Um, likewise, with the transfers to the PEs, and hopefully, the, if the uh, act is passed, uh, it gives us more leverage. Same as I mentioned. Yeah, the phasing out of, of zero rated uh, bet uh, for for sugar, I think that's a welcome uh, uh, initiative. Uh, sugar is not the most healthy uh, food, yeah. certainly. The dentists might disagree, but uh, there are also other food products, milk, 
plant that are zero rated in order to, to uh, protect the poor. I'm quite sure the poor in the remote areas, they don't have access to milk, they don't have access to bread, they do not benefit. I think we should review all these um, zero rating and maybe have targeted support for, 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 for the needy instead of uh, uh, um, this, um, this zero rating that benefits me probably more than, than any uh, resident in the informal uh, sector. And in, in order to, to stimulate economic growth, we need to improve our uh, competitiveness and the investment climate in the country. Uh, we are slipping back uh, almost every year uh, in, in comparison to other countries. So we need to have some uh, concerted efforts there. And uh, we need to have more clarity on certain policy initiatives. Nepal was mentioned that it will be tabled to Parliament this year, uh, but we haven't heard anything about NEF. Thank you.